Good morning, folks. You are watching 171 angstroms and six solar tornadoes turning out of Earth-facing view. We've got no less than eight news articles to share today, so let's get right to spaceweathernews.com, where we're looking at the last 24 hours on our star and there is nothing to be seen apart from the northern dark coronal holes. You may remember from previous days, we were expecting the impact of solar wind from the leading coronal hole, and indeed, that impacted overnight with modest intensity, and this morning it looks like a low-level geomagnetic storm is kicking in. Should be minor throughout its duration, next coronal hole is much thinner, and visibly reaching to lower latitudes. Let's start the news with stellar companions. Keck Observatory has returned images questioning the planet status of far-out gas giants of at least Jupiter size. Turns out, they don't act as much like planets as they do brown dwarf stars, throwing a nice little kink into one of the most popular subfields of known exoplanet science. Let's definitively go substellar for a moment and look at a slow melt drip model process that scientists from the University of Texas claim is responsible for the core formation of rocky planets like Earth, a slow contribution sneaking through silicate material. Let's go lunar next of the Jovian variety. It appears Europa may be seismically active today, which would provide the ultimate chemical cycling needed for subsurface ice life there. Speaking of habitable worlds, a new study by top Indian astrobiologists and astrophysicists want to put the habitability stamp on a widespread view of the universe. In their eyes, things are shaping up favorably for life in more places than we could imagine. There is also an interesting Neutron Star article that claims to constrain one of the standing questions in that field, saying they can be as small as only a few miles across, like walking 18 from the championship tees. Imagine a star so small you could jog around the sphere in half a day. Astrophysicists have now mapped the high-velocity gas nearby and inside the Milky Way, demonstrating structures moving at speeds vastly different than the spiral galaxy at large. We'll have to wait and see if things like this get put into the galactic rotation problem discussions. Folks, we have a titanically upending paper if it turns out to be true. A solar dynamo, not a deep convective monster, but a superficial electrical system, red line and up only. That mirrors the global electric circuit of Earth and how it cycles through the ground, atmosphere, up and back down to the ground in those magnetic loops. This takes Earth spots to a whole new level of understanding. Last but not least, the world's best scientists have basically accepted that they're not going to find WIMPs or Axion dark matter. And while I want them to change the macho numbers, indeed, we declare also that won't be enough. But what we don't want to see is this, another recipe for billions of dollars wasted. Instead of a WIMP, a weakly interacting massive particle, they want SIMPs, strongly interacting particles. These are no less preposterous than WIMPs, and in fact there is no way such a SIMP would be harder to find than WIMPs. It's like saying, we didn't find the termites in the house, so we're going to look for an elephant. We didn't see an elephant the last time we were in there, but who knows, maybe we missed it. I think not. Going to have to put dark matter on the docket for observing the frontier 2018? Folks, time is running out to register and book your hotel stay at the Awake event of the year. Solar storms, space weather health effects, and more of the topics we all love from those who have proven to know what they're talking about. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 525 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.